How's it going everyone? It's a Concealed Gamer and today I'm bringing you a tips and tricks video for The Division 2. So these would be some tips that I would say the majority of the player base may not be aware of but may certainly help enhance the player's skills in the game. I do want to give a big shout out to my good buddy Smittyville for helping me create some of these tips to help you guys out. So the link to his channel will be in the description below. Now I am curious to know which of these tips you did not know about and which ones actually ended up helping you. So make sure in the comments down below to let me know and if you haven't already make sure to like the video and if you're new around here make sure to subscribe for more content like this so let's jump right into it now this first tip i have for you guys is a pretty cool one and definitely helps you when you're in the heat of battle so basically when you are fighting and you run out of ammo for your primary weapon if you do a combat roll and switch your weapon by the time that combat roll is performed you will have your other weapon in your hand this will be super handy when taking on enemies with large amounts of armor and health and it could be very helpful when taking down multiple enemies without having to reload i would advise to the players that are going to use this to keep in mind that you aren't reloading your primary weapon and you're just switching to the second one so if you want to switch back to your primary weapon you will have to reload it so just keep that in mind now on to the next tip so i know pc players have a key they can press to automatically sprint for them which is basically called auto run but console players may not already know this but there is a way to auto sprint and auto walk on the division 2 now in order to perform the auto walk or auto sprint your player will have to stand still in order for it to be performed now when your character is standing still console players you will have to double click your left analog to initiate the auto walk and click it a third time in order to initiate the auto sprint. So again, I wanna emphasize that your character needs to be standing still on console in order to initiate the auto sprint. And again, you click your analog twice to initiate the auto walk and then three times to initiate the auto sprint. It's cool that they added the ability to auto sprint in the division two because this wasn't an option in the first game. Another thing I wanted to mention is that as you're auto sprinting and if you aim down your sights, your character will proceed to walk in the direction that you're aiming. So this is just another cool tactic you can use if you don't want to manually push up on the analog to move forward as you are shooting. It may feel a little awkward getting to learn the auto sprint at first, but I can guarantee you once you start practicing with it that it will come naturally and can be useful in getting from one place to the other. All right, now moving on to the next tip. Now this is definitely going to be very helpful for players that don't know which servers they are in and want the best possible connection that they can get. So if we open up our menu and take a look at the social column, we can see there is nothing there. So what you need to do is go to settings, go to gameplay, and then show connectivity info. You will have to turn this on. And now if we go back to take a look at the social column, you will see that it shows the actual server that we are in. Now this is pretty sweet because if I don't know what server I'm in, I live on the East Coast so I should generally be in a East Coast server, but I do have friends who are on the West Coast so it, it can be confusing at times to know which server you are on if you join up on friends. So this is a really cool way to check the server you're in and plus when you're outside of a server other than your own, you will be experiencing pretty bad lag so it's always good to make sure you're on your server so your connection's up to par with what it should be. Now this next tip is mainly for the advanced player base and it's all about dead zone. So dead zone, I'm not sure what the default is. I think it's three or five, but basically the higher your dead zone, the less responsive your analogs become and the lower your dead zone, the more precise your analogs come. Now, the higher it is, it's basically more helpful for older controllers that really lose their touch after a while. And the lower it is, it's basically for newer controllers. So I would definitely recommend messing around with dead zone. I would prefer you have it on zero because when it's at zero, your analogs are really precise to your touch and for advanced players you can really control the way you move and aim better. So again I'd recommend this for advanced players that are confident in their aim and movement and it really does help in getting rid of that slow responsive time when you're touching your controller so it, it really does add quickness to your actual gameplay. So this next tip can be a little bit situational but it does help people that have pretty big friends lists like myself and they want to go invite a friend and they got to scroll all the way down to their name to go find them. There's a very easy way. If you're in a clan, make sure you go to the clan column. And if that person you want to invite is also in your clan, you could go to the clan section and just invite them from there. It's very fast and helps 
very quickly when trying to find a teammate. Oh, what's that? A Division 2 Delta? In the meantime, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that like button on the video. Now, this next tip is very helpful for those of you that like to keep track of projects and to complete them for XP or blueprints and whatnot. Now, all of us know the project vendor in the base of operations, and it's kind of a bad habit of going to him every single time in order to check what projects need to be completed. So there is a better way. What you need to do is open up your map menu and then slide over to the project section tab. So from this projects menu, the player is able to check on this info no matter where they are on the map. So from this menu, you are able to perform the same amount of things that you can do at the base of operations project vendor. You can review the requirements needed, you can even donate from this menu alone, and once you complete a project, you can even fast travel from this menu. So this is basically just a mini projects vendor on the go no matter where you're on the map and it's pretty useful. Now onto my next tip, this one is mainly for my PvP players out there. Let's say you're in the dark zone and you really can't find anybody, then this is going to help you find a new server. So you need to go to your menu, just like the other tip I was telling you about for the projects. So once you're in your menu, maneuver all the way to the right until you reach matchmake. And I would prefer that you matchmake for a random activity just because that one's gonna be the most popular because it combines all of them. And upon matchmaking for a random activity, you will either have people join you or you will be sent an invite. You wanna be sent the invite so you can join another player server so you can have the chance of having a full dark zone which most PvP players seek out. Now this can be a bit tricky, but once you finally match make and join someone else's server, you need to make sure you're inside of a dark zone before you leave the group. Because if you're not inside the dark zone, it will automatically send you back to your own server. But for some reason, when you're in the dark zone, it keeps you in that join server. So that sums up all the tips I have in this video. Hopefully you all learned something. And if you didn't see a tip that you know, but I didn't post in the video, feel free to comment down in the comments. And I'm also curious to know if you did learn anything, what was the most important tip that you learned from this video? Write it down in the comments. I want to know what your guys' thoughts are. And again, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you hit that like button. And if you are new around here, make sure to subscribe for more awesome content like this. And with all that being said, this was a Concealed Gamer, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.